India Legal Stories That Count. Hello and welcome to another special story in this week's India Legal magazine. We call it Beware of the Smiling Dragon. It is written by none other than Colonel R. Hariharan, who is one of the top intelligence experts in, in the country and was advisor to the government during the LTTE crisis in Sri Lanka and was advisor also, intelligence advisor also to the Indian peacekeeping force when it went into Sri Lanka. Um, now, uh, Colonel Hariharan uh, looks at uh, China and, and, and looks at uh, Southeast Asian affairs with a hawk's eye. And he tells us that history has shown us that we cannot trust our wily neighbor. Even as they smile and shake hands, they periodically needle India as Galwan has shown. So much can be read into the Chinese foreign minister's visit. Now, the article is not about the smiling dragon as such. The 1963 cult book by Helen E. Peck and Jenny T. Dearman that tells the heartwarming story of a boy and his family and the Japanese culture and artistry surrounding kite flying. The book triggered the cult of the smiling dragon and a whole genre of cartoons and Japanese kites that continue to flourish to this day. But today, it is related to the real politic of the China dragon, or rather the China dragon dance nearer our western and northern borders. Media speculation about an impending so-called surprise visit of Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi came true when he actually landed in New Delhi on the night of March 20, uh, 24th and from Pakistan. The Ministry of External Affairs, MEA, had been keeping mum, although it will be the first trip by a senior Chinese leader to New Delhi after the Galwan clash on June 15, 2020. In eastern Ladakh, the MEA had, a, had probably kept it under wraps because India had been maintaining that peace and tranquility in eastern Ladakh was an essential prerequisite for normalizing estranged ties with China. Prime Minister Narendra Modi had explained this as India's quote-unquote consistent position on ties with China, even as late as March 21 during his virtual summit meeting with Australian PM Scott Morrison. The Galwan incident, as Colonel Hariharan says, was a moment of truth for India and Modi as it dashed his hope of building a win-win relationship with China despite the border dispute. After the incident, India took a series of actions to curb the influence of the Chinese uh, business and, and banned over 55 popular mobile apps. In spite of this, China continues to dominate India's external trade. Last year, it clocked a whopping 131 billion. At the same time, India has taken a number of measures to encourage manufacturers to quote unquote, make in India, which is Narendra Modi's slogan. Uh, this is to replace imports from China. The fruits of these efforts are evident as India exports of smartphones has jumped to rupees 43,000 crores from rupees 1300 crores four years ago and that's 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 quite a stunning figure both India and China have held a number of talks to defuse the military confrontation along the border in September 2020 Foreign Minister S. Jai Shankar and Wang Yi met on the si uh, sidelines of a meeting of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization SCO as it is called in Moscow their extensive talks led to a five-point agreement to, resol uh, to resolve the border uh, con confrontation in eastern Ladakh. The agreement aimed at implementing policy measures to defuse the border situation by the disengagement of troops, avoiding all action that could lead to confrontation, and observing all protocols and agreements on uh, border management to restore peace and tranquility. They met again in July and September 2021 on the sidelines of two SCO meetings in Dushnabye, capital of Tajikistan. Their talks continue to focus on ending the border confrontation at the military level. Border talks between commanders of both sides have led to progressive withdrawal of troops from friction points along the border. However, even after 15th round of commanders talks held in March this year, withdrawal of troops from three friction points continues to be elusive. These include patrolling point, as they say in army lingo, PP-15, 
in the Gogra Hot Springs area, Demchok and Depsang Plain. In spite of these efforts to build mutual uh, trust, China periodically needles India on the border issue by publishing visuals of Indian prisoners in the Galwan incident. China has also created infrastructure to station troops permanently and populate villages uh, created along the border. India was not amused when a commander of the Chinese forces who was wounded in the Galwan clash was used as a torchbearer in the relay in the Winter Olympics in Beijing in February 2022. Has the Chinese FM come in uh, with a proposal to ease the standoff at uh, the Ladakh border that has defied resolution during the last 18 months? It is unlikely to be such a simple process. If we go by the Chinese dragon's wily ways in the past, after all, even as Chinese President Xi uh, Jinping was uh, sitting with Modi on a traditional swing on the Sabarmati River front in Ahmedabad during his first ever visit to India in September 2014, Chinese troops were intruding across the line of actual control, the LAC, in Depsang Plains in Ladakh. Wang Yi is scheduled to meet with National Security Advisor Ajit Doval, after which he will meet Jai Shankar before taking off for Kathmandu. Apart from the border issue, there are other issues like the fate of 12,000 Indian students stuck in China after the COVID pandemic and reducing India's trade deficit of uh, some uh, 80 billion rupees with China. But there are two elephants in the room. The quadrilateral framework and the fallout of the Ukraine issue, affecting both India and China. These two issues could be the focus in Wang's parlays in India. The firming up of the quadrilateral framework with Australia, India, Japan and the US as members has been a red flag for China ever since its inception in 2017. The Quad framework is not only to curb China's increased muscle flexing in South China Sea and in the Indo-Pacific theatre, but it also aims to reduce the over-dependence of the international supply chains dominated by China. After the Quad leaders' virtual meeting in March 2021, a joint statement was issued titled, quote-unquote, the spirit of Quad, unquote, spelling out the group's objectives and approaches. It included a joint initiative to bolster supply, chain security for semiconductors and their vital components launch of a 5G deployment under critical and emerging technologies. A forming of a Quad senior cyber group to evolve shared cyber standards, uh, the development of secure software and decision on satellite data sharing. These have increased China's suspicion of Quad members ganging up to whittle down its influence in emerging areas of technology. China has been breathing fire and brimstone, particularly after India joined the Quad framework to curb its overreach in the Indo-Pacific China, um, in the Indo-Pacific. And China has been warning not only India, but also browbeating Bangladesh and Sri Lanka about joining the Quad. After a Quad in-person summit meeting was held in the U.S. in September 2021, the Communist Party of China's tabloid, uh, the Global Times, warned India, warned India, Japan and Australia, that the U.S. will, quote-unquote, dump them like trash, as it did to its allies in Afghanistan. It, yes, it warned India, Australia and Japan against following the U.S. too far, as China would retaliate. The editorial claimed that the U.S. was trying to adopt Asian versus Asian, quote-unquote, policy. They were pitting regional countries against each other by engaging with them, and it attacked Japan's PM Yoshihide Suga of hyping up the Chinese military threat to the Quad. It also said that India was not sure about the help it would receive from the U.S. if it happens to engage in a conflict with China. Now, Russia's special military operation, as it's called, a euphemism for the invasion of Ukraine last month and the strong response by the US and European countries, including non-members of NATO, have caught both India and China on the back foot. The strong sanctions slapped on Russia are likely to cause many problems to both India and China as they have strong multifaceted relations with Russia. 
it is not surprising that both the countries abstained while voting on all resolutions condemning Russia for invading Ukraine in the UN Security Council, UN General Assembly and the UN Human Rights Council. This has probably triggered fresh hopes in China to make common cause with India on the U Ukraine issue. This could help China repair its fractured relations with India. Meanwhile, the Chinese foreign minister seems to have shot himself in the foot with his statement at the Organization of Islamic Countries, OIC, foreign uh, minister's meeting in Islamabad on the eve of his visit here. He was reported as having said that China had, quote, the same desire as its Islamic friends on the issue of Kashmir and will continue to support the people of Palestine and Kashmir in their, quote, just uh, freedom struggle. Just freedom struggle is, in other words, the Chinese uh, used. Uh, responding to media queries on these remarks, MEA spokesman Arindam Bakchi actually said, and I quote him again, we reject the uncalled reference to India by the Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi during his speech at the opening ceremony uh, uh, matters related to the uh, uh, Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir are entirely the internal affairs of India. Other countries have no locus standi to comment. They should note that India refrains from public judgment of their, uh, of their internal issues. Perhaps a more forceful way of, of, of conveying India's anger could have been to call off the visit of the Chinese uh, uh, foreign minister to New Delhi. But diplomacy and real politics work in strange ways. Wang Yi's South Asia trip itself might be on a totally different mission to boost President Xi's standing as a peacemaker when his term ends in 2022 and his widely expected election as lifetime president during that year. In any case, says Colonel Hariharan, there are limitations in reading the Chinese mind. In this context, it is good to remember a former US Secretary of State Henry Kissinger's pithy comment, quote, a turbulent history has taught Chinese leaders that not every problem has a solution. And uh, that too great, uh, too great emphasis on total misery over specific events could upset the harmony of the universe. And that's a real Chinese puzzle for you to figure out. We will have to wait and watch for any statements or their absence in the, uh, in the end of Wang Yi's visit. So let us beware of the smiling dragon. Even when it smiles, its breath of fire may singe others. This is Indrajit Badwar. Until next time. India Legal Stories That Count.